I'm Tom Beaumont, a national political correspondent for the Associated Press, based in Des Moines, Iowa. Evangelical conservatives have come to play a prominent role in Republican caucuses especially. And that goes back more than 40 years to the rise of the evangelical movement within the Republican Party nationally. In 1988, uh, televangelist Pat Robertson waged an unsuccessful campaign for president, but he finished second in the 1988 Republican caucuses in Iowa. And they have come to play a prominent role in determining the caucus winner. For instance, nobody saw in 2008 former Arkansas Governor Mike Huckabee rising until very late. He, of course, is a former Baptist minister. And in the end, he gathered a preponderance of the evangelical vote and won in surprise fashion the Iowa caucuses. People took from that kind of, uh, you know, the, the playbook. And in 2012, Rick Santorum, also an evangelical conservative, who appealed strongly to Christian homeschool families who are a special niche within the evangelical community, he won the 2012 caucuses. In 2016, Ted Cruz, following the same playbook, won the caucuses. None of these people became president, but it speaks to the impact of politically influential pastors, their ability to communicate with their, with their parishioners, um, and their own internetworks. Um, these are people who often go to church more than once a week. They stay in close touch. Their church community is their social community. Um, this is an election where you can't settle for just winning. This is an election that is too important for that. This is an election where I believe the future of America hangs in the balance of what kind of country we're going to be. I appreciate that. Thank you for coming. I have a national security question. Yeah. Uh, the Iranians are threatening to shut the Straits of Hormuz. I want to make every encouragement I can to all of you to not stay home on the night of caucus to show up and vote biblically. I will get the job done next November like I did in Florida. As a leader, I'll always conduct myself in a way that you can be proud of. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis has the endorsement of the leader of a leading state social conservative group. Uh, he has a lot of pastors who have uh, a lot of politically, politically active and influential pastors who have endorsed him. But on the other hand, you have a lot of voters who are loyal to President Trump who say, look, you ask me what I like about Trump's record, he appointed three justices to the U.S. Supreme Court, and that U.S. Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade, the 50-year-old case that recognized the federal right to an abortion. They are loyal to that, and in that way, 
the evangelical community may be divided in a way that we haven't seen in decades. It's yet to be seen. And before Election Day 2024, I will again release the full list of names from which I will select my appointments to the United States Supreme Court. I did that last time, and it's had a big impact. One of the questions I have moving forward toward January 15th is if this division creates a bit of a lane or more of a lane or more potential for Nikki Haley's candidacy.